I want to talk about Amy Klobuchar. Uh, um, I love taking credit uh, where I have earned it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Anybody who watches the Young Turks is not unfamiliar with that concept, okay? And there's a lot of told you segments and we have fun with it. And uh, including all the way up to today, been rubbing it in on how they said Joe Biden was the most electable. He finished fourth in Iowa, fifth in New Hampshire. We told you, they said Joe Hillary Clinton couldn't lose. We were right, they were wrong, and it goes on and on, right? And I told you Bernie Sanders was most likely to win, and here we are. It looks like he's gonna win Iowa and New Hampshire. Okay, uh, but, uh, I also, uh, I hope I, I'm honest with you guys when I'm wrong and I try really hard to be. Man, was I wrong about Klobuchar. I thought she might be one of the first to drop out. And of course, a lot of Young Turks viewers will remember me going, Klobuchar, Klobuchar. And I thought she was mainly just an invention of the mainstream media trying to will her into existence. And I literally have said that on a couple of occasions. Well, if that's true, then she, they did will her into existence, but I don't think it is. I think she earned it. Uh, I think that she's been very tough in the debates. And I like that she punches in the debates. I like how aggressive she is in the debates, even though I don't agree with her. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't agree with her substantively, but I do agree with her stylistically. Primaries are for you to differentiate yourself from your opponents, which is so she does exactly the right thing in the debates. Now, when a progressive does it, they get a lot of criticism. Oh, they're too harsh, they're too mean, they're too negative, etc. Klobuchar does not get that criticism. Okay, fair enough, but still, she's doing the right thing. And what I like about her as opposed to Buttigieg is, Buttigieg seems like he came out of a factory and he, uh, everything about him seems fake. Mm -hmm. His manufactured talking points that don't mean anything, the empty platitudes that go on and on. I, we, it's time for us to meet this moment and shake its hand and give it a hug. And I don't know what you're talking about, uh, but I know billionaires love it. Yeah, I feel like his fingers don't actually separate. They're like the Ken doll. They just do this. <laughs> when he talks. Yeah. At, whereas Klobuchar is way more earnest. I mean, that, that there's that famous moment that we always talk about in one of the first town halls on CNN. She said, look, here's what I'm gonna give you, look under your chair. There's nothing there, that's what I'm gonna give you. So I'm paraphrasing there, but it was this <laughs> hilarious moment. She's the anti-Oprah? Yeah, she was, but in a sense, she's the anti-fake establishment candidate. Right. She's an establishment candidate, but she ain't fake. And we're used to establishment candidates who give, you know, do a point like this and roll up their sleeves and have been you know, so coiffed and prepared by the consultants. Whereas Klobuchar will throw a stapler at you. And I appreciate <laughs> that, like, <laughs> at least it's honest. And, and it turns out voters appreciate it. And so I, I wanna give her credit and I wanna give myself discredit for being wrong about her. She's one hell of a tough politician, and now I see why she won all those elections that she did. I do, uh, and I'm biting from, from Matt Stoller here, I do wanna see a reality show where uh, uh, Pete Buttigieg has to intern for Abby Klobuchar. Yeah. Like that, <laughs> that, I would love to see that. <laughs> nice job, man. Um, I, want him, I want him to bring her a comb so she can eat her salad. Exactly. Um, Cuz that happened. But I mean, one thing about, one thing to say about Klobuchar is that, um, you know, this is not someone who uh, made her strength on a uh, great organization or great, uh, you know, a, a money, uh, a flush of money, flood of money coming through. Uh, this is someone who had a few pretty good news cycles after a decent debate and saw her numbers skyrocket. And it, it, it kind of maybe tells you something about, you know, don't believe everything you hear about this, this candidate has great organization or this candidate has deep roots. And uh, I think Democrats are very, you know, certain, at least a certain group of Democrats are very, you know, just like bouncing off the walls from one to the next and giving everybody a look. Yeah. And I think that's what's reflected in, uh, in these results. I just hope that this is a reflection that gone are the days when you can just kind of cyborg a, can a safe candidate who just rattles off platitudes and you know, uh, it comes off completely fake because I think Jenk is right. Klobuchar comes off as authentic. It, she knows who she is, even if that person is someone who kind of believes, you know, in the status quo and you know, hey, hey, no Medicare for all. That's too expensive. Like, that's fine. But she's comfortably in her lane. Whereas Buttigieg used to be for Medicare for all. Now he's for Medicare for all who want it. And he's still saying that line. And same with Warren on Medicare for All, right? She's now switched to single payer and she's backtracked on a lot of things. So 
those are two candidates who would arguably be in that lane that Klobuchar is fighting for. I mean, Buttigieg is doing well, but I think whereas Klobuchar has not moved from her positions, Warren has moved from her positions, and I think voters see that and they can tell who's actually more authentic and who's just kind of trying to, you know, fill a lane or check a box or respond to a poll. Yeah, I, I love how we came back around to giving me credit. Um, <laughs> because I talked myself into it. I talked myself into it, uh, unsurprising. Uh, because look, what, we, what we're all saying here is what got rewarded? Authenticity. Mm -hmm. and, and that has been part of our, all of our theses, which is that, and, and, but usually it's only the progressive candidates that are authentic. If the establishment candidates are taught in establishment school right. to how to act like a politician and how to Martin O'Malley it in a debate and when to take your jacket off, when to roll up your sleeves, how to point, they're taught and hey, how to triangulate and all this stuff that real voters hate, right? And, and Klobuchar threw a folder at that person that tried to teach her that. Exactly, and, and now exactly, really that's right. <laughs> so, so. She, she might be the first authentic establishment candidate we've ever had, <laughs> right. right? Where she just goes, no, I'm, I'm not gonna do any of that crap. Uh, well, I, she I, does I, kind of I, level with voters, right? She, yes. she does say, yeah. look, I, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> that you know, better things aren't possible, and I'm gonna tell you that they aren't possible. And here's where I think we can make progress, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be incremental, slow progress, but I'm gonna try to make a little bit of progress. Yeah, and I, I don't want you guys to get me wrong. Uh, like, uh, I, I definitely wouldn't vote for her, but just because, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's because we have different policies. Oh, you know, another good example is John Delaney. He's been on the show a couple of times, wonderfully honest. Don't agree with him at all, but he was he was honest, stated his positions, didn't prevaricate, wasn't slimy, and, and we have a really good relationship even though we don't agree. Okay, but Klobuchar, uh, I, I wanna end one more time on how wrong I am. If you had told me she's gonna finish third in New Hampshire, I said, what is it? No yeah. way, you, she get, right. if you told me, She's gonna get 20 points, 20 points in New Hampshire. I'd be like, Klobuchar, there's, I would have said there's no way that's gonna happen. I would have lost a lot of money betting on that. But again, I mean, I think the only reason we're not talking about Amy Klobuchar's unique problems with uh, voters of color is because we, she didn't register enough and we were talking about Pete Buttigieg's yeah. problems with voters of color. The, the, the issue now for the moderate lane is that the next two states their standard bearers at this point don't really have a good path to capitalize on this success in, in the, the first two states. Right. Now, that's true, and she might have troubles down the road, but I want one last piece of credit to her. You have to also remember that she didn't have the money of Buttigieg. Buttigieg went to those wine caves and raised a ton of money. Because what turns us off about Buttigieg is what really wealthy folks in this country and lobbyists love when they see the, I love the analogy you use, the fingers that don't separate like the Ken doll. Mm -hmm. They're like, that's our guy, that's our guy, ooh, yeah. that fakeness, we love it, right? You can actually just position him to where you want it. Like it it's, but kind of, yeah. but kind of ideologically and his policy wise. But also the show that ideology doesn't matter as much. The feistiness and toughness that, that Klobuchar showed yeah. harkens back to when Warren was, was getting towards the top. That's of, because of that's when primary. she was authentic. Exactly. Right. So it was it's almost Klobuchar taking voters from Warren. I mean, if you look at the, that's if right you look too. at the numbers, that's, that's where right. the voters came from. They didn't come from Buttigieg. They, also, they came from Warren. No one's owned Klobuchar. Like who's gonna own Klobi? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's like, another good she's, point. She's been attacking left, she's been attacking right. She's like definitely, I thought, I mean, been talking above uh, her her weight here in terms of every single debate. Like she's just been like, okay, okay, are you done yet? You know, but she's had stuff to say and it it's kind of panned out for her. Um, and I don't, but I'm like, who's gonna take her down? Who's gonna, Buttigieg hasn't even Could said you anything. imagine, I mean, like if it came down, we always thought, oh, it's Bernie versus Biden or Bernie versus Warren for a while we thought maybe, or Bern, now we think Bernie versus Buttigieg or could it be Bernie versus Bloomberg? Could you imagine after all this, it's Bernie versus Klobuchar? And now, yeah, I can imagine it. Uh. Uh, she's authentic, she's incredibly tough, uh, and and uh, at least she's honest about her positions. And if you're looking for an establishment standard bearer uh, that is not gonna take any, you know, anything from anyone, right? That, that's kind of Klobuchar. 
And so again, one more time, all the credit in the world. And and remember, Grover Norquist once told us a long time ago, I think back in 2004, we've been around forever. I asked them, why did you guys pick George W. Bush instead of John McCain in the 2000 primary? Because he runs America's for tax reform. Those are all the wealthy people that actually control the Republican Party. And he said, because in essence, he said, McCain came in and said, I'm going to be independent. George Bush came in and said, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Okay, and it was a bit of a startling admission. I'm paraphrasing, but that was the essence of the conversation. I remember Ben and I were like, whoa, he just said that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so credit to Klobuchar is, if you try to tell her what to do, she will likely throw a stapler at you. And so, and and that is a that is, I'm not kidding. That's a good credit to her that it might be harder to buy her or to manufacture her. Well, I mean, I think the other thing we're seeing, sorry, no. is um, these debates really matter. And at least they did in the latter half of this primary. Uh, Klobuchar had a good debate and it rocketed her, her through. I mean, she didn't get a bounce out of Iowa. She's in fifth place in Iowa. Mm. Uh, it, it, this was all about her performance in the debate. And that's why on Wednesday, when you actually are gonna have uh, Yang off the stage and Bloomberg on the stage, that's gonna be very, Critical. That's going to be a critical debate. I hope she throws a stapler at Bloomberg. Yeah. That'd well, so great. she has some racial issues too, as David alluded some, to earlier. So yeah. it's going to be harder for her to attack Bloomberg. But yeah. uh, on the other hand, look, uh, you know, if we're looking for Bernie to attack Bloomberg, that's not normally what he does. But Warren has done a good job of going after folks in debates, and Klobuchar has done a terrific job. So maybe they will watch you crunch him, and so that would be awesome. I really, I do think what David said is absolutely right, and she does have race issues. I mean, just these states are not representative of the broader electorate, and yes, the rubber is gonna hit the road when we get to Nevada, when we go to South Carolina, and then Super Tuesday. I just think it's like, it, it there's so much way, I, I, Buttigieg and Klobuchar I don't have the Latino vote, like they just don't, they're not. They're, and, and they're not even really taking like stances that speak to Latino voters or, or African American voters. Like I mean, I mean, they haven't really stuck their neck out on any of those issues. Well, Again, back. But it just has had this Douglas plan, which was his black oh, voter that, plan, yeah. where he signed people up to uh, endorse the plan without telling them. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's kind of tells you everything mm-hmm. you need to know. Yeah, they get uh, free magazines so fake. for six months. He's the fakest man in America. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that. All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.